Hey. Got burritos? Thinking about maybe getting some burritos? Listen. These fun freaky chains of bulbous gray green leaves spellbinding bitches are fun to grow, quick to propagate, gorgeous when kept in pots, hanging baskets, and all kinds of arrangements. And best of all, they're pretty f***ing easy to keep if you know what you're doing. And in this video, Thomas Baker, Yavon Khan Melon, the strikingly attractive lady space cowgirl and I are gonna get into all that sh**. Burrito sedums are easily recognized by their bulbous round gray blue green leaves and their long trailing stems. These stems can grow up to four feet in length. They grow upwards at first, but then after reaching several inches in length, they will begin to hang over the edges of the container and from there, they will grow downwards. This effect is great for tall containers and arrangements and looks pretty f***ing cool in hanging baskets. Listen. These succulents are known by many names. Their common names include donkey tail, burrow's tail, lamb's tail, and my personal favorite, burrito. The scientific name though of this salty green succulent is Sedum morganianum. Although this species of succulent can be divided into further categories still. For the sake of simplicity though, and because caring for these different variants is so similar, I am going to lump them all together over the course of this video and refer to all of them as burritos. I do realize that this is a little bit of an oversimplification and later in the video I will return to Sedum morganianum classification and clarify just how the different members of this species vary. Right now though, we're gonna discuss how exactly to keep these beautifully bulbous, leafy, gray, blue, green bitches happy. Sedum morganianum are succulents and they need to be watered like succulents. With these plants in particular, it's best to let the soil inside of their containers dry out completely in between each watering. You can check the moisture level by sticking a finger about an inch into the soil or by feeling through the drainage hole of your plant's container. Here's the thing though. After keeping burritos for a while, you may begin to possess certain powers. One of these powers is the ability to speak the language of the burrito. What? That's right, people. Burritos, as well as many other succulents, have the ability to tell you when they need to be watered. You see, the leaves of the burrito contain a cryptic message that can be decoded by a houseplant guru extraordinaire such as myself. If your burrito's leaves are beginning to look shriveled or wrinkly, that's because it's trying to tell you that it's thirsty. If its leaves are plump, swole, and wrinkle-free, then there's probably no need to water it. Look, because the time it takes for the soil in your plant's containers to dry out is going to vary depending on so many factors, it's better to not even try to water these on any kind of a set schedule, but rather only water them when you're sure they need it. And if you're not sure, it's better to wait because to underwater these is a little bit dangerous, but to overwater them is deadly. Another thing to be mindful of when watering these and any other succulent is that they will need to be watered much more often during their growing season than during the months in which they are dormant. The growing season of the burrito, depending on where in the world you're located and the intensity of your winter, is generally from early spring to late fall, and these plants go dormant between late fall and late winter. Listen, burrito sedums, like literally every other kind of houseplant, should always be kept in draining containers. You probably knew that already though. You don't seem like the kind of a stupid ass dumb sh who would risk the lives of their plants by f***ing around with non-draining containers. As far as container size is concerned, the burrito is pretty forgiving. You can keep them packed close together in pretty small containers, though they will need to be watered a little bit more often. They can be kept in large containers too, but you don't want your container to dwarf your plant or to be so large that it takes forever for the soil therein to completely dry out between waterings. Now, the soil in your burrito's containers should be a cactus mix or some other type of quick draining soil. The roots of sedum morganianum are susceptible to root rot, fungal infections, and pests. But if your plant is kept in the right soil in a draining container and watered correctly, you should be able to avoid these and other complications that for these and other types of succulents are a one-way ticket to a watery grave. Oh my gosh. Listen. Burritos need lots of light. 
to illustrate that point, I have here in front of me a group of succulents that I refer to as the bathroom burritos. That's right, people. Not the kitchen burritos, not the dining room burritos, not even the bedroom burritos. Now, why you ask? Do I keep these burritos in the bathroom? Because this houseplant guru extraordinaire understands that a south-facing window is a south-facing window. Ideally, burritos need about six hours of very bright light every day. This light can be direct sunlight as long as your plants don't get too hot. To avoid overheating your burritos, it might be a good idea to make sure that they receive the direct sunlight early in the day and indirect sunlight later in the day when the sun's ultraviolet radiation is more intense and the temperatures are higher. They will survive in a little bit less light than this, but you'll begin to notice that the leaves will be spaced a little bit farther apart and your plant will not grow nearly as quickly. Here's the thing though, I live in the high desert of northeastern Arizona, and because of that, it's relatively easy for me to find areas in my house that offer enough natural light to keep these bulbous green bitches happy. For some of you though, this might be a little bit more tricky. I'm talking to you. Carla, you were so excited the day your burrito sedum plant arrived in the mail. Let's be real, it was missing a lot of leaves because of, you know, all the shit that went down during transit. But you were able to make the most of it and you got it potted into what can really only be considered one of the cutest little owl-shaped terracotta containers the world has ever seen. And for one brief moment, it seemed like for your new leafy friend, everything was gonna be okay. But then, you got on the internet. You found out that there was nowhere in your Portland apartment that offered enough natural light to keep your burrito happy. Listen, Carla, I see that you're feeling down and I get it. But here's the thing, even on cloudy days, there are ways to find rays. <clears throat> anyway, Burrito sedums, like a lot of other succulents, will do just fine without ever being fertilized. But if for whatever reason you want to give your burritos just a little bit of an extra push, they can be fertilized, but they can only take a little bit and only during their growing season. It's recommended to give them a well diluted shot of a well balanced fertilizer only twice per year, once in early spring and then again once in early summer. Don't overdo it though. The burrito is highly susceptible to damage or death from being over fertilized. Getting burritos to flower is very tricky, but it can be done. It's complicated though, but hey, let's get into it. Now, unless you live somewhere where all this shit happens naturally, you're gonna have to trick these stubborn motherfuckers into blooming. This means giving them plenty of light and keeping them somewhere where the temperature stays between 36 and 42 degrees Fahrenheit all winter long. Then, during springtime, continue to give them plenty of light, but increase the temperature slightly so that it's around 55 degrees Fahrenheit during the nighttime and 65 degrees Fahrenheit during the day. If all of this is done correctly, then in early summer, you'll find your burrito sedums to be adorned with little star-shaped flowers that are magenta in color. Now, these methods will only work on healthy, mature, well-rooted plants. And if you choose to take this trying and difficult path, do so with caution, because if your plants freeze, they will die. Sedum morganianum are not frost tolerant. Now, as far as diseases are concerned, the only one that your burrito is likely to encounter is root rot. And this should be easily avoided as long as your plant is watered and potted in the way that we outlined earlier. If you fuck up real bad though, and your burrito sedum's roots begin to rot because of it, you might be able to save your plant if you can cut your plant loose from the tainted roots before the infection reaches the stem, and if you can get the stem to root into fresh soil before the leaves lose all their moisture. Listen, people, it's like I always say, the best kind of a burrito is a non-toxic burrito. 
The USPCA has this plant listed as non-toxic to cats, dogs, and horses. So that's cool. Still though, I recommend keeping these out of reach if you share a living space with any dogs, ferrets, goats, chimpanzees, or other types of roommates who might be prone to, you know, nibble. If only for the safety of your plants. After all, this is a video about taking care of houseplants, not pets. Earlier, I said I'd return to the murky waters of burrito classification, and it is now time to do so. Listen. All burritos belong to the species scientifically recognized as Cetum morganianum, but not all Cetum morganianum are burritos. Regular Cetum morganianum have leaves that are shaped a little bit like tiny chubby green bananas, and these leaves are just a little bit bigger and spaced farther apart, while Cetum morganianum burrito have leaves that are just a little bit smaller with rounded tips, and these leaves are much closer together on the stem. All these here are Cetum and Morganianum burritos. If you've got some burritos but you want some more, then you're in luck because these leafy green bitches are some of the easiest succulents to propagate. Burritos can be very efficiently propagated from cuttings, but can be propagated from leaves as well. I'm not going to get into the specifics of just how to propagate burritos in this video, but if that's what you're here for, then check out this video where I outline exactly how to propagate these boba screen bitches and actually propagate them from leaves and cuttings, as well as explore the hotly debated theory concerning the efficiency of either method. Burritos are pretty lucky as they are not affected by the kinds of pests that attack most kinds of succulents, such as mealybugs and scale. If they do encounter an infestation of any kind, it is almost always aphids, and even this is pretty rare. Listen though. If your burritos do encounter an infestation of any kind, then check out this video, where I outline how to make and use an alcohol dish soap solution that is highly effective against mealybugs, scale, and aphids, as well as lots of other pests. And it's safe to use on these and pretty much every other kind of succulent. Hey, listen. Do you like bad graffiti, worse jokes, wacky macrame, and pretty good advice about how to take care of your houseplants? Well then f***ing subscribe! Thanks Faker. That's right, click that notification bell too so you never miss a new video.